Hi, so in this series of tutorials we're going through the process of making a game character in 3ds Max and bringing it into the Unity game engine. At the end of the last video we ended with something like this where we had two planes and our reference images set up on these. So we have a front plane and a side reference image. Uh, the thing I did notice is I don't really like the arm in this side reference so I'm just going to press G to hide the grid. and. The arm is kind of going off at too much of an angle for my liking, so inside of Photoshop I just edited this a little bit and I'm going to use this edit material instead. So on the material we have for that plane, I'm going to go to the diffuse slot and change the map to down here in bitmap parameters. I'm going to change it from the side to the side edit version, which is pretty much the same. The only thing I've changed is I detached the arm moved it out of the way a bit and rotated it so it's a little bit straighter. So that's all I've done there. So these reference images are going to be in a link in the description for you to download and follow along with if you want to. Um, so now that we have those, the next thing to do is just freeze them so I can't select them by accident. So to do that I'm just going to right click with the two of them selected, go to Object Properties untick show frozen in grey in the display properties and hit OK and then right click again and freeze selection. Now I can't select these by accident but I can still see them. So to get us started I'm going to start modeling with the arm and we're going to use a cylinder to start off. So first I'm going to just create a cylinder and roughly get it the size that I want. So something like this and you can see it has a lot of sides to it so we don't need that many sides we're doing a low poly model so we want to stay as low poly as we can and just add detail when we need it so i'm going to take the sides down to eight something like this and now i'm going to just rotate it and get it roughly into position so it's going to start about here it's not going to start the shoulder we're doing the arm We'll attach the shoulder afterwards. So we have this and you can see there's quite a lot of height segments as well so I'm going to just take those out and I'm also going to add a material because I don't like that material that I'm using so I'm just going to give it a basic material something like this um, and apply this now you can just see it's got a little bit of specularity to it so I can see any odd shapes that are going on. So now I'm just going to adjust the height to roughly the length I want the arm to be. And now I'm going to convert this to an editable poly. And next thing to do is press Alt X so I can see my reference image through the model. And now we're going to start adding those height segments that we took out, but we're going to only add the ones we want. So I'm going to select this ring of edges by just window dragging over all the edges, just like that. The only other way you're going to see me doing it is by selecting one edge, holding shift, and selecting that to select the ring. I'm not going to be pressing this button over here ever. So if I'm doing this, that's what I'm doing. I'm just ringing. So next we're going to add some connections, so three connections will do for now. I know this isn't going to get all the detail we need, but this is just to get us started. So I'm just going to rotate this a bit to match the kind of angle the arm is going at. And then just scale these in. To select these loops that I'm doing there, all I'm doing is like double clicking on an edge and it'll select a loop. Again that's just so I'm not pressing this button over here. Um, so I'm just going to line this up roughly. And now you'll see when I double click on this edge it doesn't actually select the loop like it did on these. That's because there's a polygon on the bottom of this so it's stopping it from being an edge it doesn't know that it's an edge loop so I'm just going to select that polygon and same with the top one and delete them 
and back in the front view back in edge mode I'm just going to rotate this so it's straight across and now I'm going to scale it and position it and same with this one I'm just going to scale this in a tiny bit just to roughly the size I wanted now what we have is a bit of a shape started so the next thing to do is add more shape so again just going to add a couple more connections here so connect settings I'm going to only add one section on each of these this time and I'm going to grab this one and scale it out to match the reference and grab this one which is the elbow one move that in then move this one out and I'm going to move this one across a bit because the tricep comes out a bit more than the underarm or the arm so this last section I didn't put a connection in because it matches the reference pretty well so I don't need more detail there to get the shape but I am actually going to put a connection here because what we talked about in the last video was adding edge loops for deformation especially when you're modeling for animation which this is going to be animated so we actually need another edge loop down here somewhere just so this can deform a bit because if it was this length and it was deforming it distort the shape quite a lot so I'm just going to put in one more connection and just drag it down a little bit a bit closer to the wrist than the forearm and when you're adding in an edge loop like this you still want to make some kind of change just to change the shape a little bit if you're adding in an edge loop and not doing anything with it it's just increasing the poly count for no particular reason really so just keep that in mind when you're trying to go low poly um, I don't really like this edge here I'm just gonna go to wireframe mode to make sure these are still lined up I'm just gonna pull it in a bit so now we have the front view more or less lined up the way we want it so we're just going to go to the left view now and start working on this over here so I'm just going to line the wrist up roughly first and work up from there so we have the wrist I'm just going to push that up a bit because it's a bit close for my liking so in this view I'm not going to scale on all axes like I was in the other view because it's going to affect the front profile as well then so I'm just going to scale on the X here to get the shape I need on this view so I'm also going to rotate these slightly this direction so it's going towards the elbow um, okay same with this one rotate it a little bit and move it into position and scale it in a bit then same with this one this one I'm not going to actually rotate. Kind of like the shape of this one. Going to bring it down a little bit. And now this one is the actual elbow loop. So what I need to do here is rotate this up a little bit. So something like there, and then just can you get it better positioned and scale it out on the X again? This one I'm not too sure what's going on there right that's better so oh I am actually going to rotate this because it seems to be needing it um, so now we have this one I'm going to start rotating these this direction so they're going to flow off that way rather than that way which the other ones were going so again just scaling out and moving into the position I want them in so this one needs to be rotated a little bit as well maybe a little bit more in fact this one needs a similar kind of rotation I'm gonna put this up a bit higher and just pull it out so we have this kind of shape now which is matching the side view and the front view so that's pretty good so what we need to do now is just shape it up a little bit more so I'm gonna go into vertex mode now and start just moving some vertices around so 
this is going to be the triceps so I'm just going to kind of exaggerate it a little bit just so it's easier to see in such a low poly model some of these kind of shapes need a bit more pushing than they would normally so just moving all these just to kind of keep the flow going around the arm and this looks pretty good this one here I'm gonna move down to match these because what's gonna happen here is the shoulders gonna join on here and the shoulders kind of rounded so it's gonna sit in better if it's like this so I'll just check that in the front view to see yeah that seems okay so back in the left view I'm just going to do the last thing I'm going to do on this arm is add this edge loop for the elbow so to add this all I'm going to do select the loop right click chamfer as you can see chamfer is splitting the line into two separate or splitting the edge loop into two separate edge loops but if you look at this this is exactly where we wanted that edge loop to be whereas chamfer is splitting it in two and putting them at equal distances from the original so it was there and it's just pulling them apart but what we want is to change the segments to two so it keeps the original one and gives us these extra ones to work with as well so I'm gonna move down to somewhere about that distance away from the elbow and just kind of position these now where I want to kind of show the elbow shape I'm going to pull them ones out and them ones back in and these back in and these out a little bit more just to kind of exaggerate the dip in the elbow as well in the front view I'm going to actually will I pull these out? no I won't I think that looks a bit strange so we have this now if I exit the x-ray view you can see it's got a decent shape to it. The only thing I don't like is the thickness of the elbow at the back. It's quite wide for an elbow so what I'm going to do is select these vertices here and these vertices here. This middle one is the point of the elbow so I'm going to leave that alone. What I'm going to do now is turn on my edge constraints over here in edit geometry and use the scale tool to scale these in and with edge constraints on all it's doing is keeping it on these lines it's not really deforming it too much then I'm going to scale them down so it's got this kind of shape to it now and then all I'm going to do is turn off my edge constraints now and go back to the x-ray view and just reposition these a little bit they just got kind of pulled out of shape a little bit too much for my liking and yeah I think that's pretty good I might just pinch these ones in a little bit more so just make sure I have them all I do something like that looks a bit better I think maybe pull these ones out a little bit more again now in the front view the last thing I'm going to do is just push this wrist vertices in a little bit and all I'm doing there is making sure I select all the vertices and just pull this back out again so now it's got a bit of a flatter inside to the wrist and I'm going to leave the rest I think I might pull this one in a tiny bit and move it out just to keep the flow a bit smoother so now we've got this arm and in the next video I'm just gonna do the hand and connect the hand to the arm so last thing you can do to check what this is gonna look like is just throw a turbo smooth on it so my turbo smooths here yours is gonna be in your modifier list so just find turbo smooth press it and if you've got all these vertices just go back into editable poly and click that to turn them off so now we don't see all those vertices now you can see I'm gonna press this button to go to isolate so now the 
only thing in the scene is this and you can see the rough shape of the arm now and it's pretty good I mean you've got bicep tricep you can see the elbow point and yeah I think it's a pretty decent shape to start with so I'm gonna turn off that and exit isolate mode again so yeah in the next video I'm just gonna go over um, how to model a hand and we're gonna attach that hand to the arm and then the video after that I'll quickly do a shoulder and attach that to the arm as well so thanks for watching and see you in the next video